let him partake of the fruit of the labor. Yes. And Paul reached over in the Old Testament and brought that picture in to the New Testament, Brother Rhodes. Marlowe Proverbs, that's not the same thing, but it's the same subject. 14. Proverbs 14 and 4. Read that. He says, where, where no oxen are, the crib is clean. The crib is clean. Yes. But much increase is by the strength of the oxen. The same picture, ministry. Where there's no ministry, uh, where there's no ministry that you haven't muzzled the ox, the ox is a laborer. Where there's no ministry, uh, there's no, there's no truth. That's right. The crib is clean. clean. There's no corn for the church. There's no corn going to be provisions. Corn is provision for the church. Where there's no oxen, so you don't muzzle. That is, you don't put laws and restrictions. That's why I would never accept a church. I never did. I never have. I never will accept a church that said to me. This is what we want you to do. This is what you, we don't want you to do. They've ended their relationship with me right there. Yes. Uh, right in the beginning. When they start, mm -hmm. and when they bring me in to be the minister of the church, and they say to me, here's what we'll accept, here's what we won't accept, here's what we'll do. Here. No, you're muzzling the ox. Okay. That, that ox has to tread the corn out. The crib will be clean. There'll be no increase no. in that church and that well, the word. And, and, and doctrine. There'd be no increase. The crib will be clean. Sister Marley, did you have the other? Except, uh, Deuteronomy 25. Deuteronomy 25. And forward. And forward. And forward. All right, that's the Old Testament uh, scripture. Now, he's dealing with ministry. He's dealing with elders. Um, against an elder, receive not an accusation. But, it didn't say you couldn't receive an accusation against an elder. So you can't do it without two or three witnesses. And a witness is not someone that somebody told. That's never acceptable in a court of law. <coughs> it has to be a person that's seen and was there and knows. Not somebody that was called on the phone. Not somebody that was sent a letter to. And he said, you can't receive an ac accusation against an elder except there's two or three witnesses. Mm -hmm. Then you, that elder must face the charges. But he said, now he's giving Bible order here. Uh, that, verse 20, now he's not, now here's what I'm gonna bring up. The church in California erred because they interpreted this scripture, them that sin rebuke before all. That was the cornerstone of their Wednesday night service pastor said, the Bible said, them that sin, rebuke before all. And he brought people up with things that had been said about, there had been rumors, or that they had some facts on, and he said, the Bible said, them that sin. He was a former longshoreman, a union steward, before he was saved out, and he was a rough guy out in the California, in the docks out there, San Francisco. Um, and so he was a rough man, but he said, oh, we're going to rebuke them. And that's what they did. But he was misinterpreting the scripture. He's talking about rebuke the elder that sins before all the elders. Rebuke the elder. The subject mm -hmm. is elders. And he's saying, rebuke the elder. He isn't talking about bringing the church up and rebuking everybody before everybody. That's that's not Bible order. That, uh, oh no, uh, Mom Davis here that wrote the song, Keep It a Secret and Pray. Uh, if you know something, keep it a secret and pray, and then go to an elder and uh, talk to the elder that he may talk to the elders, and that they, they may then bring other elders in and rebuke before all. That, this is the Bible order. Not, he's not dealing with the whole church here. Uh, so he said that others also may fear, other elders may fear. I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels. The elect angels, there are angels in heaven 
but they're not elect angels. Elect means chosen, chosen, elect. The chosen are the elect angels in heaven is the 144,000 spoken of in Revelation, the 14th chapter, as the first fruit. That's the first fruit. That's the cabinet members of Christ. That's the bride. That's the elect. Uh, see, there's a difference in angels and elect angels. And so he said, uh, uh, the elect angels, that thou observe <clears throat> these things without preferring one before another. Don't be partial in dealing with this subject among the elders. He's dealing with elders. Doing nothing by partiality or by politics. The church hasn't been able to escape politics. In my day, I've seen enough politics to sink the Titanic all over again. You know, mm -hmm. I've seen so many politics makes you sick in the church. Uh, and I didn't have parties out here in the church. But he said, doing nothing by partiality. Lay hands on me. Still dealing with elders. I've heard people use this for the church body itself. And Paul's context is not the church body. He said, lay hands suddenly on no man. That's elders. Yes. Don't accuse an elder. Don't lay hands on that elder suddenly. Uh, see? Uh, neither be protectors of other men's sins. In other words, neither get involved with an elder that is in sin. He said, don't lay hands suddenly. Don't be quick to accuse uh, you elders. Be sure you uh, go to another elder. Do it the Bible order. If you go to the altar, and remember you have all against your brother, leave the altar, leave your gift at the altar, and go to thy brother. Matthew, the 18th chapter. That's biblical order in the church, uh, among elders, among preachers. Uh, you, you go, and, and he said, don't lay hands suddenly, neither be partakers of other men's sins. Yes. In other words, don't jump into that sin yes. yourself. Yes. Get involved with it. Uh, you know, be enticed to follow after. But he said, keep thyself pure. Let be a pure elder. And drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thine oft infirmities. Now, why would Paul, if he were dealing with natural water, that would be one of the most out of context scriptures. Yes, it would. He's talking about elders. He's talking about laying hands suddenly not on them. He's talking about receiving not accusation. Suddenly he just said, drink no longer water. I don't think Paul was that kind of man. I think he was a better man to put together a subject than that. That'd be like me talking here on this subject, and suddenly I say, I want everybody to be careful of um, a certain food. It would be so out of context. Yes. You'd wonder, is Brother Marlowe losing his mind? He's talking about elders. He's talking about, you know, sins of elders. And suddenly I say, oh, I, I, I want to interject this. Uh, be careful of um, uh, that food, uh, and I would name a certain food. Uh, you, 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 you could be poisoned by that. That would be out of context. He wasn't dealing with natural water. Uh, he was, water is a, a type of the spirit in the scriptures. Uh, wine is a type of doctrine. So Paul said, drink no longer. In other words, I'm dealing in some very strong meat here. I'm bringing in, I'm, I'm dealing in some strong teaching. So don't you, don't just drink water. Don't just be given to the spirit. Your spirit. But use a little wine. Yes. For thy stomach's sake. Wisdom. I've heard this scripture used all kinds of ways. Justify a person drinking wine. You know, the Bible said to use a little wine. And they didn't use a little wine because they started using a little wine. They wound up, uh, you know, drinkers of wine, <laughs> winos, 
I've seen preachers that turned into winos because they said the Bible said I had a right to use a little wine. No, no, that isn't what the Bible said. Uh, and I've heard <clears throat> ministers say that Paul, just for a moment, relented from the subject and he wanted them uh, to have a little herbal knowledge and uh, he wanted to be a doctor for a moment and so he dealt in water and wine. But no, Paul, Paul didn't do that. That was not, uh, why would he do that? But he said, just don't, don't drink uh, no longer water. In other words, I'm trying to get you to do more than just be in the spirit and in the spirit and in the spirit, but understand doctrine, wine, uh, 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 for thy stomach's sake and thine often infirmities, thine often <sighs> infirmities, uh, the <laughs> afflictions, infirmities is afflictions. Yeah. See, uh, and, and we're going to get in James here before we get out of this. Um, see, the, uh, sickness is not always an affliction. We, we use the Psalms, many are the afflictions of the righteous, and we are talking about cancer, we're talking about, uh, we're talking about different uh, diseases of the body but afflictions is different than sickness many times you can use the word that way but the scriptures doesn't necessarily use it that way an affliction is an infirmity it's it's a it's a, it's it's an illness it's part of your it's part of sin uh, payment uh, half a cancer is not because you have sin because you have heart trouble is not because you have sin see that's a sickness that's a disease but when you have an affliction that's, that, that can be you being chastened of God and that chastisement is dealing with you mentally and emotionally, and you you have infirmities that are being affected. Your mind is being affected. Your nerve structure is being affected. Your stomach's being affected. You know because uh, there's there's a, there's something that God is displeased with you in, but it's not God. God doesn't uh, God doesn't put cancer on you, and and you and and, and God doesn't put these diverse diseases on you. He doesn't give you heart trouble. That doesn't come from God. No. But uh, see, many are the afflictions of the righteous, quoted that scripture. But I'll, I'll give you another scripture here in a minute. And you could ask questions on it if you don't see this, understand it. But he said, thine often, in, uh, use a little wine. There is nothing that will straighten out a problem in a, in a person in the church, uh, in their soul, their soul, like doctrine will. Yes. If they'll come to church and be taught the Word of God, and if they'll get their house in order, it will absolutely straighten out what we call trouble in the soul. We have to pray for people that are sick. Use a little wine yes. for trouble in the soul. Yes, sir. Use doctrine. Go to the scriptures. Take the word of God. That's why I said Sunday here. I, I haven't taught order in a long time in this church. I used to teach it strong. I used to teach it every service almost. I'd be on my feet for an hour, hour and a half, a uh, couple of hours. I've been on my feet for two and a half hours teaching doctrine. And doctrine is strong meat in the scriptures. Paul likens it to strong meat. Uh, he, he, you know, it's it's more than water. It's more than the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost blesses you, but it doesn't straighten you out. It gives you power to straighten out. After that, the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you shall receive power. Well, what are you going to do with that power? I've seen people get blessed out of their socks and go right out of their church and live like the devil. Go right out. An hour later, they'd be involved in a sin. Something less than that. They, they, but but uh, 
that blessing they got, it was wonderful, it was good, but just don't use a little water, but use some wine, use some teaching, use some doctrine uh, to straighten out uh, uh, the soul trouble, the problem going on, the infirmity in, in, in the spirit. So he said, uh, now, uh, then he comes in, verse 24, some men sin. And he's dealing with elders. Still, indeed, the subject is still elders. Some men's sins are open beforehand. That is, they repent, they cleanse themselves, they use a little wine, the word of God, the doctrine, they cleanse themselves, and their sins go on. They send their sins on to God. And Melchizedek, the high priest, He's standing at the right hand of God and he pleads over the mercy seat where the blood's been sprinkled and the sins are gone. God doesn't remember them. He'll never hold them against that person. They're cleansed. But somebody that doesn't do this, and, and this applies to the laity as we say, but here the subject is to elders. But this is a twofold scripture. It applies to the laity also, the church. But here, he said, and some men, they follow after. Well, if they don't go on to the judgment, they'll be after you in the judgment. After the resurrection. If, if they don't go on to the judgment, they'll be after you in the judgment. And when you resurrect and come from the grave, those sins will be right there. And God will have them remembered in the book of remembrance. Because God still has the book of remembrance that he started in the old covenant. He still has it in the closing chapter of Revelation, the 20th chapter of Revelation. He still has that book. And the books were open. And the dead were judged out of those things mm -hmm. which were written in the books. That's the books of remembrance. And that's where the dead are judged. If, if the Lord, if the, a person repents and the Lord wipes it out as though it had never been, why didn't he do that for David? Because David didn't David have the blood shed. David repented. He repented, but the, the Christ had not shed his blood for sin. And there was not, uh, God could not wipe that sin away. Uh, David repented and God gave him life on the earth and God blessed him. But Nathan said, the sword will not leave your house. See, in the Old Testament, the blood had, was not on the, I understand on, on, it was that. not the blood covenant. I understand that, but it almost seems like it's unfair. If then it says everything would be hid, you know, then in the 25th verse, likewise also the good works of some are manifest beforehand, and that they that otherwise cannot be hid I, I don't. I don't know. I see. David's sins were not hid. I know that. They, that God remembered them, so he could not come forth in the resurrection when Christ came forth, because his sins were not hid, because the blood had not been shed. That's the only way your sins could be hid. Uh, before Christ, no sins could be hid, but in Christ, all sins are hid. Yes, sir. That are forgiven. But there is judgment for sin. Pardon me? There's judgment for sin. Always judgment. Always. God never relinquished judgment. But but some men's sins are open. In other words, they're settled. God has settled those sins beforehand, going on to judgment. And then some men's sins follow after, and they're not hid because the blood doesn't cover them. All right? Okay. Study on, Sister Marlowe. I understand what you're saying, but I think in the day and age we live in, you've heard the phrase so much, cheap grace. Yes. I feel that the people today live in like, cheap so many grace. people live in the feeling that, oh, I can do what I wish. Jesus forgives. He forgives. They do, but that doesn't justify them or the sin That's if they I live mean. that way. That's what I mean, though. Doesn't justify it. See, they live that way, and they can live that way, and we do live in an age when sin, people are careless about sin. And they they're careless hear, about grace. They don't hear judgment. 
Pardon me? They don't hear judgment. They well, they're hearing it now. They hear forgiveness. The Lord forgives. The Lord forgives. But, but we, we also are preaching judgment now. I'm, I'm, I'm getting it hot and heavy, Sister Marla. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm dealing I, in judgment, hot and heavy. I, I don't mean to sound like I'm coming against what you're saying. I don't mean that. No, you're, you're just, you're inquiring. You're, I have a good mind to inquire, and you've always studied the scriptures, and I appreciate it. And you can. You can bring up these points, as someone else can. The rest of you can. Uh, to, you, you, can you can differ with me um, uh, in, in the uh, study of the word, because... We're searching for truth, right. and, uh, and I, I'm, I'm not bothered by that at all, because I believe that that we should search for truth, brother. Uh, thank you, Sister Marla, for that point, brother. Darryl. Well, there's a degree of, of, of sin. David premeditated and executed the sin. Presumptuous sin. Because of that, the judgment that was pronounced on David was then, not later on. But it was right then. His judgment came upon him, and that was to keep him from, part of that was from what the prophet said, was to keep him from being able to come forth in that resurrection. Exactly. So David's sin was a presumptuous sin. He spoke of it in the book of Psalms, um, hide me from the presumptuous sin. That is one that I can see plotted, carried out knew the uh, penalty of it. David knew all. He was king. He was close to God. He was a man after God's own heart. He knew. But he just couldn't put the brakes on. Mm -hmm. He just couldn't put the brakes on. And he didn't. And when he didn't, God said, I have to judge you, David. He was trying and, to and yet God, uh, the Bible speaks of the sure mercies of David. Yeah. And yet yeah. God gave David mercy. And yet God gave David mercy. Yes. Uh, with a sure sin, sure mercies of David, God gave him mercy. Uh, okay? David was trying to find a way out, wasn't he? Yeah, th that's the nature of the serpent, is to try to find a way out, you know. He tries to get, find, weave in and out and get, find a way out. Uh, Brother Rhodes. I just thought of a point that, you know, you brought up that, see, there's um, the covenants made by men in the scriptures like the Davidic uh, covenant see he was a covenant man it wasn't just a covenant you know a life thing he represented uh, something greater than that and even the, the uh, Davidic covenant was so uh, so important to God that he had to judge him because he wasn't just another person God made a special covenant with David as he did with Abraham and so forth Yes, uh, the Davidic covenant was one of the great covenants of the scriptures. Um, and I spoke Saturday night here on uh, the, um, the uh, covenant and then the covering and then the consecration, those three phases of God. Um, uh, you know, many don't, sometimes I'm, uh, messages like that, uh, they, uh, I don't know how many really absorb them. Uh, but covenant is a very important word in the scriptures. Um, the covering of God is very important. The consecration of God is very important. And if you don't have those three things in your life as a Christian, a covenant, a covering, and a consecration, you will not see heaven. I will not see heaven. Because... Sister Can Sherry. Can you explain those three real quick? Yes. Covenant uh, is a contract or a steadfast declaration between one or, or it has to be two parties. It can be three uh, or more, but it has to be between two. In the 12th chapter of, uh, I'll give you a scripture. You can write this down and study it, Sherry. In the 12th chapter of Genesis, the book of Genesis, God established the first covenant with man. He established the first covenant. In other words, it was a covenant, which is a contract between two parties or more. 
in which it uh -huh. cannot be broken without the penalty of death itself. It, it, it will be the death of that person or person that break that covenant. Um, right now, covering. No, go ahead. Did I, not, okay, see that? There's, all right, then covering. Uh, I used Isaiah, the 30th chapter, and verse 1 for covering. You can mark that down. You can study these three uh, chapters and verses later in your Bible study. Uh, God said of Israel, woe be unto them that have covered with a cover, that have taken counsel, but not a man. They have covered with a covering, see, but not of my covering. Woe to the rebellious. Woe be to the rebellious children. See the rebellious children. They they did two things. When a person is a rebel, when there's a rebel nature in a person in the house of God, they don't have the proper counsel. They don't have the proper covering. The covering is the covering you should have, Sherry, and the covering I have should have, and a church should have is a direct covering of the pleasure of Jesus Christ, the head of the church, over us as Christians, doing his will, serving him. Then we have, not a perfect person, but one that's doing his will. And they they have a covering, all right? You, have need, to con, you need the contract, or you need the uh, covenant, you need, and you don't need to break that, you, you need the covering, and then in Matthew, the 26th chapter, there's the example of the woman with the alabaster box. And she broke the alabaster box over the head of Jesus. And she anointed him with a precious ointment, valuable ointment, perfume. And of course, it displeased Judas and those around him that likewise felt as he did, but Judas in particular, uh, that he said, why did this woman waste this? You know the story. It could have been sold and given to the poor. And Jesus said, the poor you have with you always. But this woman hath done this to show my burial. She has anointed me for my death. <clears throat> God picked that woman out in eternity. That woman was chosen of God in the house of Simon to go and do what she did. She was chosen of God for that. To show a picture of the church that should be breaking the precious ointment of the Spirit and the Word of God over the body of Christ, the body of Jesus, the church. That's what we should be doing. That's what we, the woman, the church, should be doing is breaking an alabaster box open. How good, uh, Psalms 133 and 1, yeah. how good and pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together. It is like the precious ointment that flows down over the head, down to the beard, even down to the hem of the skirt of the garment. See, that's what the church should be doing. 2,000 years ago, they did it for his burial and, of course, his resurrection. We should now be doing it for the anointing of the burial of the overcomers that are dead in Christ, in the body of Christ. The, 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 we that are overcomers, we need this alabaster box broken. We need it broken over the body, the church of Jesus Christ, signifying that it is good and pleasant in the church, not, not quarreling and bickering and accusing, but good and pleasant, showing that the death of the Adam nature, the flesh, is taking place and that the burial of the old man in the body, as Christ's old man was buried in a tomb, 
but the new man resurrected. And there should be an anointing right now going on in the church. And Alabaster box should be broken.